We have another 11 a.m. update on Tropical Storm Gabrielle, which formed as of yesterday morning on September 17th at 11 a.m. So the storm has had a lifespan of about 24 hours right now, and it's continued to try to steadily strengthen, but it still remained at about the same values. It's really struggling to get its organization together in light of a lot of drier air aloft and a lot of wind shear, which is disrupting the circulation with Tropical Storm Gabrielle. So right now, maintaining winds of 50 miles per hour, the pressure is down to 1,004 millibars as opposed to 1,006, 1,007, what it was sitting at as of yesterday. And it is moving to the west-northwest at about 15 miles per hour. So we've seen a shift in direction. Gabrielle was moving predominantly to the west, then curved up to the north. And now we are seeing a bit of that west-northwesterly direction, which it should continue at, and then maybe have more of a northwesterly component as we go across this weekend. So day by day, Saturday at 8 a.m., 45 mile per hour wind. So it's still going to be in that less than favorable environment for organization. But as you go into the end of the weekend, Gabrielle moves into a much more conducive environment for development. Winds up to 60 miles per hour and then eventually strengthening into a category one hurricane by the time we roll into Monday morning and still maintaining that category one status as it tries to curve back out into the Atlantic Ocean. So that's the big update that we've received over the past 24 hours. Gabrielle is not only going to go up towards the north, but it does look to continue to curve back out to the sea. And hopefully this scenario does play out to where it passes to the east of Bermuda, which number one puts Bermuda on the cleaner side of the storm as opposed to the east side, which would be the dirtier side where there's some gustier winds and some more severe weather impacts would be in place as opposed to that western side of the circulation. So by Tuesday at 9 a.m. forecasted to have 90 mile per hour winds which is category one hurricane status, but it will continue to move up to the north and the northeast after it does make that turn. So obviously there will be some cooler water on the higher latitudes of the Atlantic Ocean. Gabrielle simply does look to be a fish storm as of right now, but it will probably have some impacts in terms of some storm surge and maybe some tropical storm or hurricane warnings that will be present over the next couple of days on Bermuda. Here's a look at the spaghetti plots. As of yesterday morning, we saw a couple model runs that were going directly over to the west over the Bahamas into portions of the Florida Keys and southern Florida. Well, good news is we don't see any models hinting at that solution anymore. We see one outlier right here that says Gabrielle is going to meander over to the west of Bermuda, but there is a good amount of agreement that all of these plots are hitting at a northward turn and then a northeastern turn back out into the northern Atlantic Ocean as we go all the way into Monday at 11 a.m. And then it shouldn't have much more of a lifespan as it moves up into the northern Atlantic Ocean. So it's not very often that you get spaghetti, mots to, or spaghetti plots to agree this much. So hopefully we can continue to see that trend and a lot of those white lines continuing to cluster a lot closer together. We do have another potential area that we are watching down in the tropics. Only a 20% chance of developing over the course of the next week. We had a 10% chance of development over the next two days as of yesterday morning. Well, it looks like this is still encountering a lot of Saharan dust that is present off the west coast of Africa. So it's still got to move farther over to the west before maybe it tries to get its act together. But overall, it would be moving into a very similar environment with what Gabrielle is interacting with right now. So obviously, it doesn't look like the chances are very high of this forming into a name storm. It will still warrant some monitoring or monitoring as it is going to continue over towards the west. And maybe if it is to move a little bit towards the south of where Gabrielle is, maybe more so towards the Caribbean, the environmental conditions may be a little bit better for some possible organization with that system. So shaping up this year's hurricane season with last year's hurricane season, we are at a very, very similar pace. Hurricane Ernesto formed in early August, and then the period between when Ernesto formed and Hurricane Francine formed. You may remember Francine made landfall in Louisiana, but Hurricane Francine formed on September 9th. So the gap between the formation of these two storms that marked the least active tropical period we had in 56 years. So yes, obviously it looked like last year's hurricane season was definitely going to be below average, but we got a very late start after the official peak. So the official peak happened September 10th last year, and then we had another named storm on September 11th, which was Tropical Storm Gordon. That's important worth noting because that was our G storm as of last year. So this year we have Gabrielle now, and Gabrielle formed about six days past when 
Tropical Storm Gordon did form as of last year. So Gabrielle did form as of yesterday, which was September 17th. So it looks like we're a little bit behind pace, but we now have our G name storm and we didn't get our H name storm last year until September 24th, which of course was the infamous Hurricane Helene. So during the 2024 hurricane season, six name storms before the official peak, and then we had a whopping double that number, 12 name storms after the official peak, and most notable Hurricane Helene, of course, and Hurricane Milton, which had its fair share of impacts along the western Gulf Coast of Florida. So 2025, right on par with where we were last year. Six name storms before the official peak, and then forecasting anywhere from 7 to 12 name storms that are still left in the hurricane season. We have one of those name storms that we've gotten past the official peak, which is now Gabrielle. So what's the next name on the list to claim? That would be our H name, which is Umberto. And then after that, we'll go into our second column of names. But right now we've had seven name storms in the Atlantic hurricane season so far. We're very well behind the pace of the Pacific hurricane season, but we'll continue to keep you updated. Doesn't look like the formation of Umberto is very likely as of right now. Gabrielle simply looks to continue to move away from the United States, which is never a bad thing, but we'll continue to keep you posted with any changes.